uh, that we will we will be beginning the uh, the, the the carol of pre, the prelude of carol. So. Grace and peace to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you to Broadway Baptist Church this evening. So grateful to be gathered here together once more. We welcome you and all of your loved ones and friends whom you bring with you this evening. We are delighted to be in the house of the Lord tonight. This is, of course, a festive time, and we celebrate this, but it is my duty at the outset here to settle us for just a few moments so that we can enjoy the sounds of the season with the prelude of carols. And so we hope that you might take the opportunity to allow this music to be a gift to all of us in this time. And along those same lines, if you have children with you this evening, three and younger who might need some special care, please make note that we do have available child care workers at the end of this hall in the narthex, through the centrum, and on into our children's wing this evening. Uh, we would be happy to help you uh, if necessary, though we pray that this would be a happy and wonderful service for all of God's children of all ages. We prepare for this time together. Again, we're so happy that you are among us. And we welcome you and we say Merry Christmas.
The Lord be with you. And Merry Christmas to everyone. We welcome you this evening to Broadway Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. We are delighted to be gathered here on this very, very special Christmas Eve night service celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are visiting with us this evening, my name is Ryan Price and I am the senior pastor here at Broadway. We welcome you not only as visitors among us, but also as our very special guests on this very special evening. We like to say that we are a church of both extraordinary worship and also extravagant hospitality, and we find that to be doubly so on Christmas Eve, so we welcome you all. A couple of notes before we begin our worship service this evening. First off, this should be a child-friendly service. However, we do recognize that there may be some parents under special circumstances who may need some uh, additional help for children ages three and under. If that is the case, you can go out these doors all the way down the hall to our children's wing and there are children, child care workers who are there who can help you. We recognize that not all children were like Jesus, quiet on that Christmas Eve. In addition, a couple of other things to make note of. Uh, we recognize that we are still in the midst of the pandemic. This service has been advertised as a mask service. We will be singing and we hope that you will respect everyone around you and keep your mask on throughout the duration of the service. And then in addition to that, we recognize that we will be passing lights, uh, candles, uh, the flame at the conclusion of tonight's service. A couple of uh, tidbits on that. One, if you will take your unlighted candle and dip it into your neighbor's lighted candle, that will help us to uh, keep the sanctuary clean of wax. And then in addition to that, at the conclusion of our worship service, just before the last hymn, uh, we will be extinguishing our candles. We invite you tonight, rather than blowing your candles out, to take the small communion cups in the communion racks in front of you and just place the cup over the top of the candle and it should extinguish very, very quickly. It worked on YouTube. <laughs> we welcome you this evening, a very special night. It's so good that we can be together and Christ is among us. We welcome you with your spirit as we pray in this hour to be met by the incarnational God of Jesus Christ. I say unto you, lift up your hearts.
The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Prepare us for the promised one, the chosen one, Emmanuel.
Please pray with me. O oh God, we, your faithful people, come. Some of us come happy, and some of us come grieving, but all of us come with joy because of the greatest gift you have given to us in Jesus. Even though we may be battered, we are indeed triumphant as we journey again to Bethlehem, to the quiet stable, overflowing with the light of your love. We come to join with the angels and those saints who have gone before us to sing praises to your name, O God of promise and hope. We come proclaiming glory to you in the highest and to adore the one who bears the image of your presence among us, the one who gives us the promise of a new kingdom of peace on earth, and the one who brings salvation to all. We come believing that your spirit of love has met us here and fills us with the true meaning of Christmas. O oh God, we come. Amen. The journey to Bethlehem. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cornelius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. The birth of Jesus. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Sees that coldly fragrant. 
currents flowing, stealing our senses all away. Never the like did come a blowing, shepherds from flowery fields in May, when sees that coldly fragrance flowing, stealing our senses all What is that light so brilliant breaking here in the night across our eyes? Never so bright the day so waking started to climb. Skies. What is that light so brilliant breaking here in the night across Bethlehem there in manger lying, find your Redeemer, haste away. Run ye with eager footsteps high, worship the same. Find your Redeemer, haste The Shepherds in the Fields. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified.
the good news. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. chorus and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors
now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What a joy it is this Christmas to hear the carols yet again springing from the tongues of the Christian people and the scriptures read once more in the tender voices of children. Last year, this sanctuary sat silent and empty on Christmas Eve. What a gift it is then to be able to sing and this year really mean, O come all ye faithful. <clears throat> and what a gift it is for this great architectural instrument to be played with the voices of God's people, greeting God's Son yet again. The angels sing with us, and I hope that your heart does also. But even with all of the joy and glad tidings of the season, there is also a certain shadow being cast over this Christmas, too. We're still in masks. <clears throat> And some of us still don't feel safe to come to church or anywhere else for that matter. Some don't feel safe in their own country or even their own world. And though we survived 2020 and are almost done with 2021, we still have a sense that we aren't completely out of the woods yet. A recent day's headlines in a national newspaper confirms our senses. Omicron is a dress rehearsal for the next pandemic. <clears throat> Rising from the Antarctica, a climate alarm. January 6 committee recommends contempt charge. Your inflation worries say a lot about you and may affect prices. The dozens killed in tornadoes are mourned. What a failed planet looks like. And finally, an opinion piece, the world is on fire, SOS. <clears throat> Talk about the Grinch still trying to steal our Christmas. Jesus has been born once more, and here old Herod comes right back at him. And would that we, like the wise men, knew how to escape it all by some other route. But there is no escape for most of us. No island to run to, no Egypt to exile in. We can't just up and leave like Mary and Joseph in the middle of the night. No, we, like the rest of the people in Bethlehem, have to stay here. And we have to face whatever is next. So how do we face it? With courage and with conviction and with the assurance that this child who has been born among us in Bethlehem bears for us a message of God's love and care for this whole earth and solidarity with the totality of our struggling and uncertain and fragile and still yet very, very precious humanity. We speak of Emmanuel this time of year. It means God is with us. God is so entirely in solidarity with us in our humanity and in our creation that God sent God's own son 
fragile and vulnerable in all of the elements and evils of this world, that we might behold God's complete at one with each of us and be burdened by our sense of at one and responsibility for each other. This is what the theologians call the doctrine of incarnation. In the incarnation of Jesus, God came to be one with us and the world to share our fate and to partake in our sufferings and our struggles and to show the soul its worth and teach a weary, weary world how it is that we are to go on loving one another. And love never ends. I know that we are indeed all of us pretty weary. We're exhausted by what has been required of us over these past two years. It seems like we're never quite getting anywhere, making no progress, no headway. The old problems still exist and the old evils still persist. And the love of many is in jeopardy of growing cold. We've all, every one of us, had thoughts of just giving up and giving in and altogether letting go of that Christmas spirit of kindness and compassion for one another. We're all in danger of giving way to cynicism and selfishness. In other words, we could all, without too much effort, become real Scrooges. But then the line from the old familiar, familiar carol speaks to me, and perhaps also to you. Let nothing you dismay. When the prophet Isaiah spoke of God being Emmanuel, it was in a time of tremendous uncertainty and fatigue in Israel. They were exhausted and worn out and had just about given up on the vision for who it was that they could be as a nation and as a people. Isaiah said they were walking in darkness with wickedness burning like a fire in the forest all around them. It was a dismaying time. But then the prophet spoke these words. Words which echo down to us through the centuries for just such a time as this. Do not fear, I am with thee. Do not be dismayed, for I am thy God who strengthens thee and I will help you always. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers thou shalt not overwhelm thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of peace. We are, as Paul said, afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not yet destroyed. And we will not be destroyed. 
not as a people. For faith and hope and love will remain and the Christmas spirit will endure and the faint flicker of love's pure light will hold out against the darkness and the darkness shall not overcome it. In the great vault of Christmas's past, there is a letter from the German pastor and martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer, written to his co-conspirators in the struggle against Nazism at the end of 1942, just before his arrest in the new year of 1943. The letter is titled, After Ten Years, and it is an epistle of encouragement and exhortation. A word to the weary and the anxious after a full decade of holding out and just trying to hold on. And in two lines, the pastor gives to his flock and friends insight into the life of faith that on many, many occasion has brought me much comfort and consolation when facing the unknown. I believe he wrote that God will give us the strength we need to help us to resist in the times of distress, but he never gives it in advance, lest we should rely on ourselves and not on him alone. What the new year of 2022 will bring us, we do not know. It will no doubt be full of wars and rumors of wars and variants and rumors of variants and fears and uncertainties over the economy and nation and who knows what the heck else. But the word tonight is this. Be not afraid, beloved, nor dismayed, and do not give up on your hope. For Emmanuel, God is with us, and God will be with us. And they who walk in darkness shall see a great light, and on them living in a land of deep darkness, a light shall shine. And the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh shall arrive right on time, along with whatever other good gifts we will need from God to keep Herod at bay and the baby alive and the light of Christmas love aglow in our hearts and in this world forever and ever. So may it be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, and Mother of us all, and all of God's people then said, Amen. The Manger Scene When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. 
The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. pray with me. Most loving God, thank you for this night and for all it represents. Thank you for the hope you, de- you bestow, the peace you bring, the love you pour out, and the joy you give. We thank you most of all for Jesus, your word made flesh. May he be our light as the holy star lit the way for the wise men. And may his light in us be evident to all who see and know us. Amen.
now. With the Spirit of God in Christ in you. For the world needs your light and your hope and your deep, deep courage. So go forth and be brave. Be strong. Be kind. And be love. Always be love. Amen.